Uh, good morning to our um, attendees from WA. So my name is Shaq. Um, and just a little bit about myself. This is a scenario modeling simplified webinar that we're doing. Um, so I'm a qualified CPA. Um, I was previously, before starting as a pre-sales analyst here at Forest Grove, I uh, was a management accountant uh, in a commerce environment. And before that, I was a tax accountant in public practice. So I'm very familiar with the pains of uh, budgeting and forecasting and doing scenario analysis. Um, especially uh, a critical feature right now because of the current environment that we're in scenario analysis and scenario modeling. So a very timely topic for us. Uh, so just a little bit about Forest Grove. Uh, we've been delivering budgeting, forecasting, modeling, financial reporting, analytic solutions to customers across Australia and New Zealand since 2004. Uh, the slide here shows a little bit um, of some of the customers that we've worked with. Uh, ASG, for example, um, scaled from 11 to 180 dealerships uh, with minimal increases to their financial resources after we implemented uh, Profix, which is a tool that uh, I'll be demonstrating later today. Um, and it, we also helped them consolidate their data to provide insight into their uh, parts and inventory. Uh, we've also done uh, a, an implemented Profix in Synergy. Well, which have an extremely complex budget process that's got more than 100 cost centers and we basically have the time it took for them to do um, their budgeting uh, with the implementation of Profix. So we've got a very experienced uh, team here at Forest Grove um, and uh, really excited to get into this. All right, our agenda for today. So we've got five, we're gonna talk about the five benefits of scenario modeling, some of the key considerations to consider. Um, the Forest Grove four-step scenario model, uh, we're gonna do a short business case and a live demonstration, and it'll be a short Q&A after. So the five benefits of scenario modeling is that it provides a sense of control in un uncertain environments. I mean, with uh, the impact that COVID-19 has had um, on businesses, not just in Australia, New Zealand, but worldwide has been unprecedented. So it's gonna be a lot of strain on uh, finance leaders and business leaders to sort of have, an, have some certainty or have some idea of what to do um, going forward based on uh, the, the impact that COVID-19 is having at the moment. So it does uh, help to provide a sense of control in uncertain environments such as the one that we're in. Um, it helps to manage stakeholder expectations. So once you've done um, scenario, uh, a couple of scenarios based on where you think the business will be heading into the next few months, you sort of get an idea of, right, this could be the potential outcome and these would be the steps that we need to take. So it helps to alleviate some of the stress and anxiety that some leaders, uh, some leadership teams may have at this point in time. Um, it leads to better decision making because it's now informed decision making. You've quantified your outcomes, you've done your forecasting, you've done your modeling and you've gone, yep, this is likely where we're gonna end up. So these are the steps that we'll need to take. It assists with planning with what levers can be pulled uh, if the scenarios do eventuate. So it's a really important step um, in, in, for finance teams right now and for businesses to be doing scenario analysis. And uh, it positions members of the finance team as strategic business partners, not just bookkeeping. Uh, it, add, it really adds value, um, especially from the point of view of the non-operational, uh, for the non-finance side of uh, the business. So some of the key considerations to consider when building a scenario model, we wanna understand what the business problem is and we wanna define the end goal. So we just really need to be clear about that before we start building any sort of model, um, just so that we address the issues. Timeliness, how long will it take to create? Um, often uh, scenario analysis, especially in times like these are done on an ad hoc basis or whenever it is required. Um, and a reasonable scenario analysis may require data that's not always readily available in the ERP and takes time to gather. So ideally it should be done, excuse me, it should be done quite quickly. Um, and on a platform that can be distributed to stakeholders as soon as it is done for review. Um, and this can be a stressful uh, and uh, pr pressure uh, pressurizing time. So uh, being able to do this quickly and get it out there to have a look and see what are the options and what could eventuate um, does help to alleviate some of the stress and the pressure. So now with the model, with the model trade-offs, flexibility and granularity are important points to note. How robust is the model? Does more than one variable need to change in a given scenario? Chances are there are. So you must, you, you sort of got to build your model to take that into account. It's not just going to be one line that needs to be changed. It, it could be several lines. Um, and, but having said that, with granu in terms of granularity, can enough detail be provided 
is it required is that enough is, is that amount of detail necessary because bear in mind you do have to turn this around usually within quite a, a short period of time so even though more granularity would be better as you can get a more precise outcome a more accurate model might be uh, more usable because you can sort of generate the result quickly and get it out there to your stakeholders and make a decision uh, based on those outcomes the model structure. So you're talking about data and drivers. Is the data potentially located in multiple sources? Are they connected to your modeling tool? Does it have to be manually sourced, uploaded via spreadsheets? Are the drivers uh, being used in the model historically reliable? So these are some of the considerations that you want to take into account when you're building your model. Uh, bearing in mind that you do have to get access to this quite quickly, the numbers have to be accurate, um, and you have to turn, turn it out in a short period of time. Historical timeframes. Um, how much data is required historically to help you build your model that it will be reliable for the business? Are you going to just look at this time last year, this time last two, three years? Um, how, much, how much historical data do you really require to build a reliable model for the business? Again, bearing in mind the time frame that you have, it takes to actually churn this out. Assumptions. Have they been been proven historically. Um, have these assumptions worked before in the past, whether you were doing budgeting or forecasting, were they a reliable predictor of uh, where, um, the business out, uh, where the business would be headed to in the next few months? Calculations, how complex are they? Are there multiple sheets in a workbook or just calculations from a single sheet? Are there many variables? So if you've got calculations stemming from multiple sheets, um, you'll probably understand that uh, I've got to make sure that those, those links work because when they don't, gets kind of embarrassing in the final sheet when you've got errors due to link, uh, links breaking from multiple spreadsheets. And the outputs, um, the purpose is to, in, inform, to make informed decision making. So it should be presented in a format that can be easily understood by both finance and non-finance uh, personnel. And lastly, stress test your model before distributing it out. Does it give you the right result? Um, does it work the way it's supposed to? Um, it's a quite a really important step um, because there's nothing like uh, creating a false source impression or impression that doesn't, uh, doesn't really resonate with your audience. So now we're moving on to the forest growth four step scenario model. Now there are four key steps to create a robust set of comparable scenarios. In this example, we have, we have sorry, just go back there again. We have assumed PNL modeling taking into account year-to-date actuals and the remaining year-to-date budget at step one. And we merge those inputs to create a scenario one base. So this could be your forecast or it could just generally be your base scenario. Then we move on to step three where we choose variables to adjust and save those additional scenarios. So for example, in this case, we have scenario two, three, and four, and we're gonna compare, compare that to our base scenario, which in this case is scenario one. And then we're gonna select the scenario most likely to happen for variance analysis. So this is typically how um, we'd build a scenario model um, and, and look at how it relates to what we currently think we were going to, what we, what we currently thought we were going to do. Now in the business case that's gonna follow for, uh, for the short demonstration, a company has recently completed a nine plus three forecast for the financial year, but due to the unexpected impact of COVID-19, the result in the completed reforecast may not be achieved as customer scale back orders due to unexpected shutdowns. So management has requested finance model scenarios that could potentially eventuate as a result of the possible reduced sales. Due to disclosure requirements, management is required to update the board. Now the forecast has established a net income of approximately 105 million for the civil and infrastructure division in Darwin. And after discussion with operations, three likely scenarios have been identified. Scenario one, the revenue and associated cost of sales declined by 15%. And this is like a low impact best case scenario. Scenario two, the revenue and associated cost of sales declined by 35%, including government subsidies, medium impact. So we're gonna take into account um, some of the stimulus that the government's been announcing recently, like the JobKeeper stimulus into the scenario. And scenario three, revenue and associated cost of sales declined by 70%, including government subsidies, which is a high impact worst case scenario. A little bit about the budgeting tool that we're going to use um, before we, we step into it. Um, we're going to use we're going to be using Profix, uh, which is something that we've implemented across many businesses across AU and NZ. Um, it's a very useful tool that sits on top of any uh, ERP, so it doesn't really matter what your systems are. Um, Profix sits in and has data connectors that go out to it and pull data in. It's used for budgeting and planning. Uh, we've used it for sales revenue projections. Uh, 
cash, uh, cash planning, capital expense planning, forecasting. Uh, we've used in reporting and analytics. It's got a little self-service dashboard that you can create quite easily. Ad hoc reporting analysis, uh, we'll drill across into your ERP, connects it if it connects direct to your ERP. Uh, workflow and automation. Uh, we integrate uh, data from multiple sources, not just ERPs, wherever they sit, we can generally pull the data in using Profix. Um, unlimited versions, what if scenarios, uh, business modeling, and, uh, and it, we also use it for financial consolidation and close. It's a really powerful, uh, powerful tool for comparing one scenario relative to another, and you'll see that quite, uh, in, uh, you'll see that shortly. So right now, what I'll do is I'll just head over to the Profix dashboard. So when you log into Profix, now we can log in via any browser. So I'm using uh, the cloud version. Um, so we can log in using any browser. I'm using Chrome here. You can see me logged in as Tony Stark. Um, and so you, this is a, just a, uh, how a dashboard would typically look like. You'd have metrics that you'll need. Um, you'll have charts. Uh, you'll have uh, a, a BI embed that we've got in here, a Microsoft Power BI embed. Um, and really the report that we're concerned with at the moment and the my favorite reports is the generic scenario analysis with detailed PNL only. Now we, we have customers that use it for balance sheet projections and cash flow projections, but for the sake of, uh, for the sake of this uh, demo that we're doing, it's a very simplified uh, PNL version. So now once we've clicked open into the report, what happens here is that uh, the report pops up in data entry mode, as you can see on the left-hand side, um, we've got pages. So when you click on pages, what it basically does is it shows you the same template can be actually used for across many divisions. So we've got three divisions over here um, and we can use it over many sites, total entities, we've just got three there and you've got the different scenarios as well as month-to-date and year-to-date options. So it's really powerful for modeling different scenarios and, um, and using the same template. So you can just build one template and then have that applied to different sites, uh, different entities within the group, um, different scenarios, different uh, timeframes, month-to-date, year-to-date, quarter-to-date, if, even if you uh, have that set up. Right, so we're just gonna walk through this report. I'm just gonna minimize that draw screen there. So the generic scenario analysis with DTP and only we're seeing reporting in local currency and you can see the division that we're looking at at the moment. Um, these are all dynamic, the divisions are dynamic and if we swap them out, they'll swap into uh, a different division. So you've got your PNL chart of accounts here. And we're scrolling all the way down. Yep, and you've got a statistical account here, a hit count account, and we'll see that in action later on. So we've got your actuals year to date for March. We've got a monthly average here for the nine months, actuals to March. We've got a forecast for the full financial year, 2020. For, we're assuming a July to June financial year. So we've got revenue, cost of goods, expenses, so on and so forth for the full year and the monthly average for the full year. And we've also got the three remaining months. Um, we've got this three remaining months forecast in, in the individual months and the total for the financial year where we think we'll end up. So you see to begin with, there is no variance to the forecast. Uh, because we are assuming that that's the base that we're going to, that's the base scenario that we're working up, step two from the forest growth model that we talked about. So remember in the, in the, in the slide that we showed earlier, the first low case, um, the first low impact scenario was the 15% decrease in revenue. Um, the, the handy thing about Profix is once we can, we can quickly model this by selecting all the cells that, all the revenue lines, and we want to reduce that by 15%. All we would then do is just right click, adjust data, and go minus 15 and hit okay. And automatically it calculates that and it's dynamic and you can see that the formulas show what the differences are. And again, we'll go down here to cost of revenue. We'll make the assumption that if we're gonna lose 15% of revenue, we'll probably do 15% less in cost of good sales, cost of goods sold. So we adjust data again and reduce it by 15%. And we've got one scenario uh, outcome out done already. So what we do then, um, we can also have a look at travel. Now with the travel bans in place, we're going to go, oh, hang on. Uh, we're not really going to inc inc incur that much expenses. So we should just probably uh, reduce that. And you can make the change simply by flipping that to zero. And then we can actually insert a comment. We can right click on the cell. And then we can add comments. And in the add comments and we can say due to travel bans. And 
and we can save that. So that comment has now been saved and is in profix. And you'll see that there's a little red triangle that appears and due to the travel bands, we're saying that that's zero. And we're gonna say that that's gonna go, that's gonna be consistent across. So we won't have any airfare. We might still keep car rental and taxis um, and we definitely won't be having any ent entertainment. And we'll keep the meal travel allowances, for example. So already we've got comments in here and don't, and the good thing about Profix is that once you've done a comment in there and it's saved in Profix, you can then actually have a look at data history and data history will tell you, oops, let me close that. Due to travel ban, we're just gonna save this. So now we're saving this version. So now this data is now saved to this scenario. And what, what we can then do is then we can look at data history and that should pop up that, that's right, there we go. That I, I changed it to zero and it's got the date and time and the user that's used it. So Profix keeps a log of this. So there's, an, uh, there's traceability and there's audibility into the changes that have been made. Because once you get into one or two, three scenarios and you're changing three, four things per scenario, um, you get lost, you can, you can easily get lost on the number of changes that have been done. And to, keep, to track the changes, Profix does a great job of uh, helping us uh, in managing this, right? And now straight away, we look further down, we can see the variances. And we already see that scenario one has already uh, differed from where we thought we were gonna go with the forecast in terms of net income. So we're already dropping in terms of uh, revenue and uh, for, for the bottom line and sorry. Now, if we go back in here, we refresh this. And if we select scenario two for medium impact, now in the slide that we talked about earlier, when we talked about the medium impact, it was 35%. So I'm gonna hit, Scenario, I'm gonna load scenario two. Now, obviously again, it starts out without a variance, but what we're gonna do is we're then gonna select the cells again, adjust the data, reduce it by 35%, and perform the same act again on the cost of sales lines. You can adjust by a dollar amount or a percentage, but in this case, I've chosen to go with percentage. Um, and now we're just gonna delete um, airfares. And again, with entertainment. So we're keeping a hit count of 20 in here. I'm just gonna minimize that, widen the screen up a little bit and just refresh. And you can see that we've already got, um, now we're taking into account as well the government subsidies to the job, uh, job keeper uh, uh, stimulus package that the government is offering businesses. So we've got a hit count here at the bottom of 20 employees. And what, ha what happens is that th that has already dropped. Uh, we're showing that the wage subsidy has come through from the government and that sort of like has a little bit of a cushion on our bottom line. Um, so you can see that you can also formula, put formulas into cells and that automatically calculate as you change. So it's very dynamic. Um, it's a very dynamic tool for you to use in scenario modeling. And then we're gonna go to the third one really quick. And now we talked about how in the slide, the third one was actually revenue and associated cost of sales declined by 70%, including the government subsidies and the worst case scenario that's in play. So what we'll do here is again, we'll take these cells, these revenue cells, adjust the data. Meals and theme, we'll just wipe all that out. And then what we do is we'll update. So when you refresh, you're automatically saving it. And what Profix is doing is just writing it back and saving the data. And already you've got your scenarios in play here. So you've got your forecasts based on that. You've got your scenario one, scenario two, scenario three. And visually this is dynamic and it's changing in real time as we're changing it here as I'm doing it for you on this webinar. And you can actually see the impact uh, that these changes have had on um, the graph. So you can see how very quickly that like once your um, 
once your model is set up and you've got an idea, yeah, this is how I want to present it. You, you build up the template in Profix and you can easily and quickly just sort of model this and you can change this. It doesn't have to be 70 or 75. If you think that scenario three is going to be 85 or more, you can just uh, mess around with the, with the numbers to get the outcome that you think is likely to eventuate. And um, we can also save row notes. We've got row notes in here and you can put comments in uh, revenue, negative 70%. And again, you can save this and it automatically records that. So when you bring up this scenario again in a report, you'll be able to see those comments. So now what I'll do is I'll, I'll we'll head back to the slide. Um, and that concludes our uh, the demonstration for the webinar on scenario modeling. I'll hand you back over to Jesse. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, feel, feel free to ask them. Okay, thanks, Shaq. Um, so we've got a question that's come through. So Ross, um, uh, someone's asked, uh, how does this all consolidate? So, um, and while Ross is answering that, if anyone else has got some questions, we've got a couple more minutes, so just shoot them through in the Q&A box. But uh, Ross, I'll hand over to you. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Um, great question. So, uh, Shaq was showing you um, some scenario modeling uh, on specific uh, on a specific um, organization, and then from the drop down, you would have seen uh, you could toggle between different uh, entities or different um, departments. Um, so, the tool that we're using here for this demo is called Profix, uh, and that's um, a, a tool that uh, is based on um, uh, analysis services and Michael, uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, and so the, you set up hierarchies in dimensions and they automatically consolidate in real time. Um, so as soon as you're entering data, it would roll up to the total entity, for example. You can also build in functionality to do things like intercompany eliminations and um, posting journals at month end and those sorts of things. So. Um, the really powerful thing is here, you can have lots of different cost center managers or end users typing in data for their relevant um, departments or, uh, or entities. Um, and then from a finance perspective, you can see that consolidating in, in real time. Okay, thanks Ross. Um, I've had uh, another question come through. How could you account for changes in uh, foreign exchange rates and the impact on, on that? Yeah, so uh, again, uh, cool question. Um, products handles foreign exchange by having a separate um, FX model where we captured the relevant exchange rates and those are uploaded from external sources or you can uh, enter those manually from a forecasting perspective. Uh, and then each entity is tagged with their native currency. Uh, so if it's a UK entity, that will be pounds and US, uh, US dollars. Um, and then a process gets run to convert everything from native into whatever reporting currency uh, you need. Um, so that could be um, yeah, Australian dollars, uh, converting New Zealand dollars, converting um, Japanese yen, et cetera. Uh, and could you import that currency daily, weekly? How, how often could you update it? Yeah, you can update those as frequently as you like, and you can do that with the scenario modeling aspect. So uh, you could, uh, attach um, different uh, FX rates for different scenarios uh, and have that um, apply as part of your model. Okay, thanks Ross. Um, we've got a couple more. Um, does, can we produce group cash flow forecasts as well within the three scenarios? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a number of customers uh, who, who do full three-way um, forecasting and scenario modeling. Um, so entering p &L data, which flows through to balance sheet and then in turn through to cash flow. Uh, so that's something that's, that's really common across our customer base. Okay, thanks Ross. Um, we've got a few more flowing through. Um, with regards to the consolidation mentioned earlier, do we need to set up a separate consolidation company for group eliminations? Yes, yeah, so you would set it up in the structure of the dimension uh, in Profix. So that's something that can be maintained by the finance team and controlled by the finance team. You don't have to involve IT or go back to your, your ERP to, uh, to facilitate that. Okay. Um, we've had someone ask, can we show a cash flow forecast on screen? Is, have we got that set up in 
uh, in this demo? Demo is that something that we could follow up with and, and provide later? I don't think Shaq was incorporating that into this part of the demo. Uh, it's definitely something we could follow up with afterwards and and give you a one-on-one -on -one demo there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, we can do that as a, a personalised sort of demo for uh, the person that asked that question. Um, so just checking through. Uh, in terms of reporting, can we automate the reporting? Yeah, so um, the reporting of scenario modelling and any other kind of monthly management reporting or actual to budget variance reporting uh, can be fully automated. So it can be set to distribute out to the relevant end users um, at a set day and time. Um, end users can also log into the system and access that data, that live data at any point in time. Um, so a couple of different ways to, to address that. Okay, thanks Ross. Um, well, we've, sort of, we've got to the end of it and we've got through our questions. So there's some good questions there. Um, so thanks everyone for attending for the uh, second day. Um, after this, we will uh, distribute the video as well. Um, so you can um, go back through it and pick up on things. Um, and just following on from here in terms of next steps, um, Shaq can just push through the next slide. Oh yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, in terms of following up from here, if you do want some extra help, there's a number of things that we're happy to sort of um, work with you on. So. Um, ranging from if you just want to have a conversation um, or some more in-depth um, personalised demonstrations of scenario modelling, um, uh, the person asked around cash flow forecasting, uh, general forecasting, reforecasting, reporting, any of those sort of scenarios, if that's um, uh, of use to you, we're happy to have a conversation and provide some more detailed demonstrations around that. Um, if you're looking for some help to develop your own scenario model or your own forecasting, um, then we can definitely help you with that as well. Um, doesn't have to be with the profits. If you're using Excel or some other systems, um, our consultants have got a, a range of experience, so they're happy to have a conversation with you about that. Um, and then lastly, um, because of the, the uncertain times that everyone's in, we know there's a lot of people that, have, that need some help with scenario modeling to be able to do these things quickly and you're going to need to be able to adapt them you know, as the situation changes on an almost daily basis. Um, we've been able to manage to get um, free use of profits for 60 days for uh, new customers. So if this is something that you're interested in, there's um, a really good special that's going to be running for the next few months that we can help get you set, set up, um, get you the profits version hosted in the cloud so you don't have any hosting costs with that as well. Um, and we can help you get that up and running um, so if there's anything that you want from, from any of those or if there's anything else that you feel like you want to ask some further questions afterwards, just get in touch. Shaq's contact details are on the slide there um, or you can reply to the emails that you received about this webinar and um, we'll get in touch and go from there. So um, thanks for attending. Um, if you have any questions, just hit us up afterwards. Um, otherwise, um, enjoy the rest of your week and uh, the weekend and um, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend.